Welcome back to round two of the BRDC Stars of Tomorrow from Shennington in Oxfordshire. Next, we turn our attentions to the Formula Cadet class for under 12s. This the first step on the motorsport ladder, taken by such F1 stars as Jensen Button. Ashley, you've had a good start to the weekend, winning your first heat yesterday. Yep, um, I really enjoyed it, um, and I, I was really glad that I won it, really, yeah. And you're running the number zero today. Can you just tell us what that means? Yeah, um, that means um, I, uh, I won the O-play, which is, um, so that means I'm the Open champion for uh, the rest of this year. So you're the British Open champion? Yeah. yeah so. so you should be one to watch then? Yep, hopefully. Abigail, how's it going today in the cadets? It's been all right. I've been fifth in the first heat and ninth in the second heat. So you think you could uh, get up onto the podium today in the final? I'm trying to. Who are the uh, main drivers to look out for in the cadets this weekend? Pretty much everyone out in a cart. After finishing first, second and third in his heats, Ashley Jones claims pole with Francis Harold second. While Mackenzie Taylor, championship leader James Godber here, Phil Road two. Over to Chris on the start line. Formula Cadet action then underway and the pole sitter Ashley Jones caught napping on the line there by number 17 Francis Harold who dives straight into the lead of the race. You're on board with Sam Jenkins, number 43 from sixth on the grid and here they come down towards the hairpin with well, 17 Harold leads at zero the British Open champion Jones in second, number two the championship leader James Godby here in third. You're looking back from the onboard of Sam Jenkins to number 14 there which is Billy Albone who's dropped a few places in the early stages here whizzing through the Bruno chicane they go and then these carts running up to 55 miles an hour and this is typical cadet racing you've got eight in a row here nose to tail all looking for the lead of the race and Ashley Jones is trying to get P1 back James Godby here sneaks out the inside this contact Sam Jenkins smashes into the back of him absolutely nowhere to go for poor old Sam Jenkins the two leaders both run a bit wide Godby here in third place thought he'd have a look at the inside and then got his nose chopped off by Ashley Jones as he got back online that was uh, curtains for both him and Sam Jenkins. Well, that's broken the pack up a bit. The top two have broken away. And there's the battle for third place. And a move there for number 12, Max Goffert, to fourth place from 16th on the grid. Just ahead of him, Nicholas Cristofaro in the number 19 cart. Here are the top two, nose to tail. Francis Harold is only running in 25th place in the championship at the moment. But he leads here at Shellington. Not for much longer, though. A gap up the inside there. Well spotted by Ashley Jones. And into P1 he goes. Cristofaro and Goffert next up. Chris Warburton, number 23, running in fifth place. Uh, he is currently second in the championship and just behind him you've got number 26, James Appleton, the nine-year-old from Nantwich, who finished 11th in round one. Up the front he's getting even closer at uh, the top four and out, all bunching together. One, two, three and four, all within half a second of each other. Through Wilkins they go. Jones the leader, Harold second, uh, Christopher and Goff, the top four as they run up towards the left-hander at Park Bend. Then a great duel going on for fifth position as well. On the way to Cafe Corner, you don't move an inch off line here in this cadet race, because if you do, you just know somebody's going to come and steal your position. The trouble is, if you want to overtake, you've got to go off the racing line. It should be interesting then, down into the hairpin, pulling off line is Christopher to the inside of Harold, he goes, and Max Scott goes through as well, as if to demonstrate the point, Harold drops from fourth to second in the batter of an either. Uh, fifth and sixth place cart's not too far behind either. Jones then leading, but look at this, three-pronged attack from further back, and Christopher goes into the Goff goes through, and there's contact between uh, Harold and Jones. Harold tried to squeeze through as well, you can see exactly what Jones thought of that, and he's dropped down to sixth place, here's the replay, top two have gone at the inside, at the inside, tried to go Harold, wasn't quite enough for him, he had every right to go for it, but Jones had to try and get back on the line, and equally you can see, well, he was a bit miffed with that one, put it down to a racing incident. Top two then, this time it's Christopher 19 and 12, Max Goff, and Max Goff now into the lead of the race, currently seventh in the championship, the 11-year-old from Brickstock, supported by Rockingham Motor Speedway, what a drive this has been so far, if he can hold it to the chequered flag, but he's been pushed here hard by Nicholas Christopher, the 11-year-old from Milford Haven, the teammate to James Godby here, and James Appleton, number 26, swings to the outside as the top three all get bunched up on the way into the hairpin, bit of wheel banging there with Nicholas Christopher. Francis Harold tries to sneak up the inside, glancing over his shoulder is Sir Christopher, making that a very, very wide cadet cart on the way to the Bruno chicane, and that has helped Max Goff on the run to the check and flag, put a bit of breathing space between him and the rest, and now it's a scrap for the runner-up position. Christopher is in the rather precarious position of having two cards breathing down his neck. Here comes Francis Harold, and here too comes James Appleton. Clever piece of driving that. They both go through. Down to fourth goes Christopher. There, though, is the man on top from 16th on the grid. A wonderful drive from Max Goff. 
with victory and fastest lap, Goff takes the maximum 75 points as Harold and Appleton secure their first podiums of the year. With points leader Gobbe here failing to finish, Taylor moves to the top of the table, but only by a single point from Warburton. But what about that terrific dice between the top three? I like going, oh well, fourth at least. At least I've got two more years to go and all that. And then I came up, ooh, I got the speed. A couple of laps from the end, um, two of them got past Ashley. Me and Ashley collided, and so those two got away. So it was quite a hard job actually catching the two up. On the first lap down at Wilkins, I was coming together. I just avoided that. And then me and Nicholas Cristofaro got together and caught the gap. And from there on, it was defending. Now we really turn up the wick for our final feature class, Super ICC. With 125cc engines, six-speed sequential gearboxes and top speeds of over 100 miles an hour, these extreme machines are not for the faint-hearted. You're a pretty experienced driver. You've been around for a lot of years in all sorts of different cars, some single-seater racing as well. How does this compare? This is by far the best. I've raced um, the direct drive cart. Um, I did a couple of seasons in single-seaters. I also did a few saloon car races and the, the 125 ICC is definitely the best class to race in. It's so competitive. What are these things like to drive? They must be like rockets. They're awesome, yeah. Once you hook six gear in one of these, it's uh, quite good fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a six-speed sequential gearbox, yeah. so you've not got any time to rest, really, even on the no, straights. No. Well, we've got a bit of a, a bit of blisters and stuff this weekend. There's so much gear changes. There is, it's a lot of work. Frank, you're uh, running second in the points in the championship after a very good race at Rara. Yeah, that's right. Um, from the first round, we managed to put it on pole with uh, two wins and a fourth in the heat. Finished second in the final. And you won the first heat here at Shellington yesterday, but things have gone downhill since then. Yeah, the first heat, um, we won it and uh, set the fastest lap. But uh, coming in when they were checking the carts, uh, there was a technical problem with the side rails, although it's, it's such a stupid thing to be excluded for and it has no effect on the car, we've been uh, taking out the results. The only thing is I don't think is this championship will go smoothly for anyone because it's so competitive. It's good to see in this championship, not necessarily in your class, but there's a lot of uh, female drivers coming through. Yes, it's um, getting more and more accessible to, for females. It's really starting to grow now. Do you get any stick from the boys when you beat them? Um, some of them don't take too kindly to it, but most of them just treat me as another driver. It's not a problem. A 3-2-3 grid layout with standing starts for Super ICC. James Mudd, Sam Moore and multiple British champion Mark Fell complete the front row, and Chris is ready to take us through the action. Hold tight, it's the one 2 five. the Super ICC class is going, it's carnage in the middle of the field. Look at that, it's uh, number 39 struggling to get off the line, Jonathan Neville, and number seven, Pete Mitchell, ran into him, and Pete Mitchell's race lasted approximately three feet. Up front, no problems though for Sam Moore from second on the grid. He leads from third on the grid, Mark fell in second place, and the pole seat to James Mudd, uh, down to third position. Number one there to the right of the picture is Frank Raffle. He's got the on-board camera, and there is the on-board shot, and delayed there after wheel banging with 35. Daniel Edwards and that allowed number four Nick Smith to come through. Nick Smith having been delayed uh, with a bit of contact on the way through the first corner. So Frank Rathort having already made up uh, five or six positions, he started 20th on the grid, the current British champion. Here's a replay of the start from Frank Rathort and that's how he missed all the carnage by simply driving off the track. It worked. Top two go through then. Uh, up to fourth place is Hall Lloyd in the number nine car. Here is Frank Rathall on the board. He's just had a lunge at the inside of Nick Smith in the number four car just ahead of you. Uh, but it didn't work by the time he got the nose pointing back in the right direction. Smith had worked his way back ahead. Those two are now ninth and tenth having charged back up the field. And here comes Frank Rathall as Nick Smith gets delayed behind the 16 car of Matthew Sherman. Around the outside of the pair of them goes Frank Rathall. What a wonderful piece of outbreaking that was. He exposed himself on the outside. Line. There's James Mudd, number three, the pole sitter, uh, the British number three from Cumbria, just uh, 16 years of age. He'll be perhaps a little bit disappointed to be running third after starting on the uh, pole position. But these two showing electric pace, Sam Moore, number six, and Mark Fell, number 12, uh, both from Cumbria. And now we're back on board with Frank Rathall down into the uh, hairpin at the inside of number five. And that's Lee Stamp, former British champion. Nick Smith didn't quite work his way through. Uh, Sarah Wilson's just ahead. She's in the top six, going very well indeed in the number 88 car. There's the fourth place man. That's British number two, Tom Hibbert. Another 
former Genie Gearbox racer, just like uh, Frank Raffle. There's the man, Frank Raffle number one, going through. Uh, and Nick Smith with a nice move. Finally, he gets past Lee Stamp, staring at uh, the rear exhaust then of Sarah Wilson. You're on board with Frank Raffle. He's in the tow, pulls out of the slipstream, pops it at the inside and steals the racing line. So that's up to fifth place now for Frank Raffle. Tom Hibbert just ahead in fourth place. We're on the last lap, uh, Hull Lloyd has dropped out of the top five. Unfortunately, he's crashed out down at Hangar Corner. So some more leads on the final lap of the race. Currently 10th in the championship, a student on a gap year, being chased by multiple British champion Mark Fell, who once became the youngest ever senior direct drive British champion at 16 years and eight months of age. He's 22 now, he's the championship leader. And this is on board with Brad Raffle again, who's easing into Tom Hewitt's advantage, but he's going to run out of time, I think. Fifth, though, will be a very good effort. Here's the winner, though, of round two. Sam Moore, Mark Fell in second place, and James Mutt slips to third. After a disappointing start to the season, Moore takes victory in round two. There are good points also for Fell in second and Mudd, who notches up his first podium of the year. With Rathol struggling to score points in the heat, Fell extends his advantage from two to 32 points, and that win pushes Moore up from 10th to fourth. Three decent heats and front row for the final, and I got the whole shot. And after that, you look back a few times, but when you're looking on your final and you see that you're doing consistent times and they're not catching you, then you, you think you're a bit comfortable, and it never is, though. Frank, you didn't make it on the podium, but we had to have a word with you because that was a brilliant drive from the back of the field. Well, um, starting 20th on the grid, um, realistically, we were looking at top 10 for a good result. Uh, managed to get a good start, um, come through the field, and that, that's probably the best that I've driven in a long time. Well, with racing like that, you can see why they're called the BRDC Stars of Tomorrow. Fantastic stuff here at Shennington. Next time out, we're at Three Sisters in Wigan and one of the fastest circuits in the country. We'll see you there.